And nothing beats a trail to travel farther every day I'd rather a lake and trees and rock than a hideaway in a southern box Hi, Dave Hatfield here today for traditional bush gear and I'd like to pass along a trick for using the sun as a compass. And of course, you're going to ask the question, why bother uh, in this GPS era? And it's a good question because I have a GPS and I use it and I like it. If I remember to bring it along and if it has batteries. And I could, of course, use a, a magnetic compass as well. But again, you don't actually have to use a magnetic compass if the sun's up there and you can see it and you know the time of day. So let's, let's just sort out the basics here. And it's something everybody knows. So the sun rises in the east and then it sets over there in the west and it goes halfway between through south at noon. Uh, south on the compass is 180 degrees. So, at noon, if you walked right towards the sun, you'd be walking right at 180 degrees. That would be your bearing as you walked. Conversely, at the exact same time, if you walked along, directly along the shadows, you'd be walking the other side of the compass, which is 360, or north, right? So this is something we all know. And of course, the sun is not directly overhead in the winter, because uh, where I live here in the northern hemisphere, it's... Um, it's, it's low in the sky, and the farther north you get, the lower it gets. You can cal calculate all that out if you want, but you don't need to. The point is it's low enough that you can use it as a bearing indicator. So that's great, but you don't usually want to walk exactly at the sun or exactly uh, north, the shadows, because life just doesn't work out that way. So let's figure out um, some alternate bearings of the sun. and. The most complicated part about that is just dividing 24 into 360. 24 hours in a day, 360 degrees in a circle. Again, something we all know. And the answer is 15. The sun appears to move 15 degrees per hour. Because the earth here is turning this way, and so the sun appears to be going down. So at noon, we say the sun is 180 degrees. So let's just check this out. Let's just... Uh, explore it. Now I need to get at my wristwatch, so pardon me for a second. All right, it's just, I don't know if you can read that or not, it's 1238. So the sun is, you know, a little past halfway between 12 and 1. So we said the sun should be 180 degrees true. Okay, we're not using magnetic here at all, right? We're using a celestial body, so there's no influence from magnetic, but we can cross-check with a magnetic compass. So it should be about seven degrees seven or eight degrees you know half of 15 uh, past 180 so and then of course there's magnetic variation to add on to that which is why it's kind of nice to be able to take magnetic right out of the picture so if i aim this compass you know the the plastic base plate if i aim that right at the sun and then i put the red the north seeking end of the compass in between the lines then I look down there, I see between the lines. Yeah, yeah, so right now the, the red lines on the base plate are pointing just shy of 200. Yeah, say about 195. And that makes sense because there's a westerly variation right here. So it works. It actually works. Well, let's talk about if you don't want to walk directly south or directly north at noon, right? And that's, that's going to be life. So we said the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, moves 15 degrees per hour. Well, if it goes through south at noon, 180 degrees at noon, well, 11 o'clock in the morning, just take, pick, a, pick a time, 11 o'clock in the morning, it's one hour to the left or to the east side of south, right? So it's 180 minus 15, 165. And the shadows are the reciprocal, 345. At 10 o'clock in the morning, it's two units of 15. So that's 180 minus 30. So that's 150. Bearing of the sun will be 150 at 10 o'clock in the morning. And the shadows will be 330, right? 30 degrees off of north. 
the, the other side of the compass. Same thing the other way. At one o'clock, the heading of the sun's gonna be 195. At two o'clock, it's gonna be another 15, at 210. And we get the reciprocals of that same thing. So with just some grade two arithmetic, we could be able to come up with a whole bunch of different bearings that we could use if we wanted to walk on a straight track through the bush or canoe a, you know, a path across a lake or a bunch of amongst a, a group of islands or even steer a small boat. And um, that's fine and dandy for northerly headings, but what if you want to fly more or less east, east and west? And here's the second trick. You can use your body as kind of a protractor. Like uh, right now we're still pretty close to south. So let's just imagine right now that the sun, it's noon and the sun is at 180. And of course the shadows are at 360 at north. Well, if we just line ourselves up with the shadows and the sun and face directly forward, well, that's east. So east right now would be that uh, uh, broken off uh, ash tree right there. And then if we wanted to walk east, we just walk towards that tree and, and keep the, as we walked, we'd look at the shadows and keep, keep our trail uh, breaking the line of the shadows at 90 degrees, that per perpendicular to it. Really simple. But let's say we want to fly or walk at uh, 045 degrees, you know, northeast. Well, that's east, that's north. If I took the right in the middle of the two, well, that's right there, uh, that leaning uh, maple tree there, just a little bit to the right of that, just by my eyeball, halfway between there and there. That'd be 45. Let's just double check that. So, come on, little magnetic field. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, yeah, okay, so now we got the compass aligned with north. And yeah, that maple tree is about zero four zero zero four five, probably a little more zero five five right now, which makes sense because the sun's moved past noon and we've got some westerly variation in the compass, but it works. So that just to the right of that maple tree is zero four five, and another trick again using our body, using our body as a protractor. There was east, there was forty five. Well, forty five divides into three very easily, right? three units of 15. So there's, if you take that 45 mark, that leaning maple tree, and, and north, and then divide that by eyeball into thirds, you got 015, 030, and then 045, which is the northeast we were talking about. So if you wanted to walk 030, you would walk uh, just to the left of this closest uh, maple tree. Of course, <laughs> life interferes, right? And that would take us right through that snowy, thick clump of hemlock, the young trees. We wouldn't want to do that. So we would walk around that grove to the right and maybe around the next grove or a bunch of boulders or something to the left. And we would average that course as we walked, but we could stay on course by just looking at the shadows and then and arranging our track to cut through, cut across the line of those shadows at a certain angle and just keep that constant and we'll be walking very close to 030 the whole time. It really works and you can do that technique on any any bearing of the compass at all. So again let me just run that through you. <clears throat> your, your body, you, you align your body with with the reference point the sun or the shadow. You pick the 90 degree point to that and you half that is a 45 degree point and you divide that up into thirds for the cardinal points of the compass. Let me step in here and point out a couple of things. This technique is for general orienteering. It's designed to keep you walking in approximately the right direction. It's not designed for accurate survey work. There are some obvious inaccuracies, and the first one is daylight savings time. When that happens, it's best to knock an hour off the time on your watch and go back to standard for these calculations. And the other is that not all the time zones in the world are neatly divided up into 15 degree increments. Time zones are sometimes arranged for economic and political reasons. You can get used to that too, particularly if you're traveling in one area most of the time. You might learn to add 5 degrees or take away 5 degrees 
and then it just becomes second nature. Also, living on the eastern or western edge of a time zone will have an effect. Again, you can correct for that. And finally, this technique is most accurate on the hours either side of noon, not early in the morning or late in the day. I generally use it from 10 till 2 or maybe 9 till 3. This whole thing is just another tool, but it is kind of nice to know where you're going. What it comes down to is a simple little uh, addition subtraction arithmetic that gives you an indication on the ground with shadows to either walk along and cut the shadows at a certain angle this way or a certain angle that way and you'll find that you can walk a straight path for a considerable distance without looking at a GPS, without looking at a magnetic compass and you know if other folks aren't uh, familiar with what you're doing they'll kind of wonder how you're doing it but you've got a great big compass way up there in the sky might as well use it of course, <laughs> it doesn't always work, right? Because if it's cloudy, you're beat. And uh, I don't recommend using this technique with, you know, moss on the north side of the trees or things like that. No, if, if it's a cloudy day, you must resort to a backup. That would be a magnetic compass or GPS or both. Anyway, Dave Hadfield here for Traditional Bush Gear. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed being out in the woods. And I hope you get a chance to look at some of my other videos. Thanks. And I smile when the snow lies deep on my land.